Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Animal Pack YouTube channel and following along my off-season prep journey and leading into the Olympia of 2020. So if you didn't haven't been following along, I'm just giving the rundown of everything I'm currently doing, how I'm making progress throughout the season. And if you want to catch up in the last video, go, go check, check it out. Um, this will be the volume five of my off season. And I'm currently 23 weeks post show, post the 2019 Olympia. And we're soon to probably be counting how many weeks out I am from the Olympia, which uh, I'm already doing. So we're right at 29 weeks out, which uh, pretty soon at about 20 weeks out, I'm going to start prep for this show. So it's uh, it makes sense to counting. And to be honest, since I got off stage, I already knew how many weeks out I needed to be for the next Olympia. And that's that's been the plan. So uh, just to give you a quick rundown of like that last update we did, I was coming off my blast phase. Body weight had topped out around 240.6, and uh, we were doing like two high days a week. And so going into this this cruise phase of HRT and just trying to really solidify this body weight and this new tissue that's come on. And so that's where I'm at in, at this this point of the journey. Um, I'm five weeks in of, of just HRT with some new programming in place and just trying to really hold this weight and solidify it before going into prep from here. So waking up this morning, I was uh, 241. So the transition from a blast phase into HRT, a lot of times you expect like a, a large weight drop and we were potentially going to be seeing that, but um, it just, just didn't happen. And, and uh, I think that goes to show what I talked about last time of like not changing your, your mentality once you're going into training and, and really trying to still be progressive in with your weights and attacking them just like you would if you're in some type of grow grow phase i think that really helps retain that tissue and helps retain that conditioning that you've that you have achieved as well so my weight hasn't tapered off here i will say I'm a, I'm a little bit softer at this weight but it's really minimal like looking at my my posing pictures um, i still have some glute lines uh abs are, are definitely like in a very, very good spot. Quad lines go all the way up into the hips and you can still see like hip flexor present. So conditioning's at a, a very good spot for, <clears throat> with consideration for how far along I am in the off season. But even being that I'm, you know, about five weeks in on, on HRT, which, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty stable set place that I am right now. Uh, as far as the diet plans concerned, there has been a, some some minor changes. That last diet I was doing two like 700 gram carb days, uh, so if we've changed a few things. Um, there was a week where my body weight came down a little bit. We did like a big cheat meal, and with doing just a big cheat meal with food this high, I, it is pretty easy to get soft quicker, and it just wasn't ideal for my digestion and going into the next day. Then also like doing a cheat meal at night, I had like bad reflux and couldn't sleep. It slept terrible, and so for me, just adding in like a, to, if I need to add more calories in, like a, a a cheat meal that's really really high in fat and I won't know how it digests, isn't the best approach. So what we ended up doing was to make sure I stayed a little tighter is just doing one high day a week, and but I handled this high day really really well. So we ended up doing 900 grams of carbs, which all this diet stuff is below, guys. So if you want to see the exact foods I ate and how I how I laid it out, you you can see that. But 900 grams of carbs for me is just really more of the same foods, and that continues to digest good. And so it was 900 grams of carbs with uh, 330 protein and then 48 grams of fat. So I'm not adding in protein or fats directly those days. It just increases from the the uh, sources from the carbohydrate. So you know. 100 grams of carb and rice is like 10 grams of protein, so my my proteins are are, are going to be increasing due to that. So that's one day a week. I do that on my one of my push days, and that's the push day before I train legs. So over that, for me, I really want to emphasize my shoulders, chest, tries, but then that carries me over into leg day, which is a pretty exhausting session, which is what we're going to get into here in a minute. I try train legs. I'm going to take you through the workout. 
Um, but that's the rationale for that diet setup right now. And my body weight will come up about two pounds on that day, but then I just, I come right back down uh, close to this 240, 241 area and maintain, maintain well. So performance gets a good boost on those days and it's not making me softer. And so those are all good signs that we're, where we want to be. Uh, regarding all the other, all the other variables, sleep has, has been good. I've had a few nights um, that haven't been as good. I think allergies are are at play a little bit there, and that might be due to it. I've also been thinking a lot on different stuff, and just life, you know. it's You have a lot of life stressors that can happen. It could throw off your sleep and throw off your recovery. So it's just, you know, it happens, stuff, stuff to keep in mind. But overall, training has been uh, excellent, though, so the sleep hasn't been cutting into that. And talking about last time I was coming off a deload week and going into this new training phase, and I, I had to reprogram a lot because I've mentioned all these like aches and pains and things that were coming up, and uh, I had to move a lot of my training around to tr try to improve on movements that I just shouldn't be doing. Um, so a lot of them were using a lot of excessive uh, supinated work, stuff where I'm having to contract my forearms a lot and just getting overused. So anytime I can, I'm using like the, uh, you've seen me use like the wrist cuffs or ankle cuffs to just try to take my hands out of it some. So I'm not uh, overdoing that uh, for like my flexors. Then also moving away some of the strict overhead pressing, like 90 degrees upright pressing overhead. I, d I just, I don't have a lot of external rotation. Some of it's mobility. Uh, some of it's just being just a muscular person in general and like your erectors are thicker so you're not going to be pressing up against a bench as firmly so you're going to be more externally rotated that on top of like shoulder mobility the weight is forcing me into the position and just tears up my shoulder um so it's just like don't force yourself to do into a position where you're, you're compromised so moving away from those my shoulders are feeling great now so rather than doing like a 90 degree overhead press I'm doing like a 75 degree on an incline bench. So it's still a steep incline, but uh, I'm pressing where I feel comfortable, not trying to force this um, overhead. So that's been a great uh, thing to do for my, my shoulders. As far as lower body though is concerned, like I feel great. Uh, I'm just training legs once a week. That's a very strong body part. Hitting legs once a week, they'll, they'll just grow. And even with a very low amount of volume. So, uh, but everything with, with my uh, like piriformis, I had some problems with in the past and lower back, and it's all it's all perfect. So I feel excellent for being in a HRT cruise phase where like recovery could be diminished. But I think that's the key to take away here is like if you're removing variables or decreasing variables that do aid you in recovery, whether it be supplementation or sleep's changing or nutrition's changing, you know, whatever that is, if there's a decrease in your, your recovery variable that, that improves recovery, you should decrease your training volume in turn or some aspect in training to where you, you can match your stimulus to your recovery. And I've, I've talked about this before, but uh, going into this phase, you know, you wanna keep, keep that effort high. That's what I think is important, but just keep the volume level decrease a little bit and pick the right movements for you. So that's all the things I've been doing this these past few weeks, and it's been very, very productive for me. Uh, as far as cardio goes, I have been doing yoga. We kind of got sidetracked away from the yoga, but I've been feeling so good. So uh, the yoga was in place to get like good mobility and get some, some uh, movements where I'm not normally in. But with my rehab work and, and everything, it's been going, going well. So we haven't been doing the yoga, but I still do cardio six days a week. Do it on the Stairmaster. Been going between level five, level six, which is enough push for me, but it's definitely not to where it's you know taking anything away from my workouts. And people are like, John, are you doing that much cardio in the off season? Like it, it's really not much at all. Twenty minutes, and I think it's good for, just for heart health. And it's it's easy, guys. Twenty minutes first thing in the morning. I like it in the morning fast just because I get it done and out of the way, and it keeps me in that really good set routine where I'm always doing. This is actually the first off season where I have been consistent with my cardio. And it's easy for people to fall off in the off season with cardio. Uh, just, so it, it, you feel like to admit your, well, well, I'm trying to take in more calories and put size on and gain weight. Like cardio is just taken away from that. But there's a lot of other benefits to it as well. So I think it's part of the reason why I've, I have stayed as lean as I have is keeping that in place. Because that's I'm the leanest I've ever been. And that's also something that I'm consistently doing. So 
it uh, it adds up. But uh, that's that's where I'm currently at. That's the update, guys. Um, let's get into some some leg training. So today has been my quad day, and I have done a few things different. So uh, there was a, a while back that I had a little little tweak in my quad, and I started I started going back on the hack squat, doing reverse band hack squat, which I think is a great movement to do on your leg day if you're you know having any type of issues with uh, loading in the lengthen phase, that's when you'd be more liable to tear a, a muscle, it's when the muscle is fully stretched. So I made some changes just taking off the reverse band and doing and, and being able to get back to doing straight weight and loading the, the, the movement in that lengthen phase. But my first things I do before I get into like my leg training, I get on the foam roller and roll, roll out specific tight spots. I'm also trying to move through the range of motion for that, for that muscle and joint while I'm rolling it. I think that, that helps uh, give you some good activation and release in those muscles. So I roll out specific tight spots. I'm not trying to roll out everything. It's very, very specific. Then I also take the newbie, the EMS machine, and I'll scan with it and send a signal to contract the muscle um, along all everything I'm going to be training for that day. So I'll go around all my quads and hips and I'll find spots that will be really reactive to it. And those are reactive spots are usually spots that are being down regulated or guarded some. It might be potential spots that could be compensating or where you might even end up getting an injury. So what I can do is find that spot. I can turn up the machine, go through some squats with it and it'll help um, kind of remove that governor a little bit and also just bring blood into the muscle. It's a great way to start start off my training. So now I'm at the hack squat and I'm, I'm, that's my first exercise for the day with uh, no band this time. And I think I've liked using the reverse band because it's helped me to really reset my form and get comfortable going very, very deep in the bottom. You'll see like my, my range of motion is very great on this and I really sink down low. And I think that's so important on these hacks is like, if you want big quads, you need to get them fully stretched and load them that way. So this like this shit where you see people half squatting and quarter squatting, they're wrapping their knees up and all this shit. Like you're not gonna build big quads doing that. You need to go deep and low. I don't care if you got two plates on there. Um, that's gonna give you more stimulus than putting a ton of weight on and just going halfway down and and wrapping your knees and doing all this stuff. Like you're loading the joints and connective tissue more. Like that's gonna take the abuse. And you're you're not going to get any more stimulus, or it'll be less stimulus. So full range of motion on these squats. And uh, what I do is just build up and work my way up to about a set of 10 to 12 reps somewhere in there, and then back down in the weight and do a set of 12 to 15 reps. So I hit a low a low low um, rep set and then a high rep set, all getting high effort level up to like really really close to 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 failure. Um, then from there, we moved on, and I go from a quad movement to, I, this is a mix of quad and ham today, so I'll go to a lying leg curl, and being progressing in that, and the key here is like really trying to drive your hips down, and squeeze your glutes, and just bend the knee. That's the point of a lying leg curl. You see guys that, they're like kicking their butt up, and you end up not shorting the hamstring completely, and you're bringing other muscles into the movement, so lock those hips down, really flex out the knee. On this one, I keep the reps a little bit higher, so I'll, I'll hit like a set of uh, 15. I'll lower the weight and just hit another set of close to 15. So keep them a little bit higher rep on, on the line leg curl. Then from there, I'll move into a wide stance leg press. I've heard this so, so many times, like your feet are high and wide, you're going to hit more hamstrings. <laughs> Which you might feel, I think there's a perception of it, because your hamstrings are more stretched, but that doesn't mean there are... Uh, contributing to the concentric phase and contraction. And what is going to be a bigger player if with your feet higher and wide is your glutes because you'll go into more hip flexion so you're going to have more glute involvement. Um, also your adductors are going to be more involved too. So if you need a movement uh, like a leg press movement that can have some quad involvement and put emphasis in adductors and glutes a wide stance leg press is a good movement to do, and that's why I have it programmed here. And so I'll move into that as a compound move, and um, I'll go up to what's felt better for me since I am in such a deep, opened up stretch, is hitting a high rep set first, 
then jumping up in load for my, my last set and hitting a lower rep set. So you so it's kind of flipped of what I've been doing, which isn't normal for me, but it's felt a lot better. So I'll go up and I'll hit a set of like 20 reps, then I'll up weight again and just get as many as I can, which I ended up, I went up another 90 pounds and my reps dropped down by five. So that's, that's uh, how I've been executing those. And uh, same thought process with the hack squats, is going as deep as you can to get the full range of motion out of the joint without compromising yourself either. So you don't want to go so low, your butt starts pulling off the pad, um, but but you, you want to keep going down and get that full, uh, as much hip flexion as you can. Those were my, my main big compound movements. I get into some isolation work now, so I want some isolation work for quads and glutes. I already did a, a hamstring movement. So I, what I do is superset um, leg extension and a single leg uh, kickback for glutes. And uh, I like the superset because they're not going to interfere with each other. I don't want that in a superset. So um, I, I want something that's completely different, but it's time efficient. And it's not uh, a movement where you're combining that are so taxing, one's going to affect the other as far as cardiovascular goes. So um, I do two sets and just trying to land between 20, 12 to 15 reps on both movements. Leg extensions, I'll go a little bit higher. Uh, I think I hit my first set close to like 20 reps, but then staying with the same weight, the reps will drop down. So I just do two sets there. Then from after there, I move on to my very last movement, which uh, I've been doing, which is different for a bodybuilder, is pistol squats, just body weight. And I'll just do three sets and go one leg at a time and see how many reps I can get, which isn't very many. I'm 240 pounds, and so I'm not going to be doing uh, cranking out 20 reps like a, like a CrossFitter or something. Uh, but I, I can still do like a, like about 12 reps in my first set, and they kind of taper down from there. But I really like them as a, as a, as a finisher because I, it's I keep a lot of control, and um, I can the way you're shifting your weight because you have to shift your weight to the outside of the foot, and it does emphasize the lateral head of the quad, your quad sweep a little bit more. So if you try them, and, and you can get a lot of lengthening out of them too, because if you're holding on to something, you can lean back almost like you would in like a sissy squat. So you'll feel it like all the way up into the upper part of, of the quad, like uh, your rec fem area. Uh, but it's it's a good movement to finish with, especially after everything's so fatigued. Uh, but I, I would recommend like holding on to something. Don't try to do them like just freestanding because just the balance will become an issue from there. But my, overall, the, the the volume for this workout is, is really low. So I have, let's see, for um, like seven sets for quads. And there's, you know, two like two sets of hamstrings. And then I count in like four sets for glutes. So it is more of a quad uh, emphasis day. But overall, that volume is really low for the week. So, uh, but for me, that's been enough to grow off of. But for someone else, you might need a lot more volume in your quads and hamstrings total for the week. That's just my genetically strong point, and I'm not trying to really improve, improve much and put more volume to my upper body. So we're looking at my workout, like keep that in mind. You might need more volume for this day, or you might be doing legs twice a week.